we think about what lessons Europeans can learn from Canada, some things cannot be transferred easily. There's the history of immigration in Canada, though that can be very problematic at various points in time because it was blatantly racist. There's the geography of Canada, which we can't really import into Europe. But there's also the immigration policies, the integration policies, the ethos of multiculturalism, actual pluralism policy, and then open and inclusive citizenship that is based on civic membership, not ethnic membership. And when I think about where Canada is going, I'm pretty optimistic, but there are some danger signs, and these are the danger signs that undermine these foundations that have made it so successful. One of the dangers is that Canada has recently had a pretty big increase in temporary migrants and temporary laborers in particular. And here is a case that I think Canada needs to learn from Germany and from the United States because the experiences of Germany and the United States clearly show that there's nothing more permanent than a temporary migrant because people might come as laborers, but they're human beings. And so they fall in love with people in the country they're living in, or they might want to bring the people they love from the country they came from. And at the risk of just deporting these people, you have to accommodate them. So again, we're faced with a moral choice. And one of the dangers in Canada is moving away from a permanent settlement approach to a temporary migrant approach. And by doing that, you then can create a population of clandestine or illegal immigrants, and you undermine public trust and faith in the immigration system. A second danger is the, uh, the cuts and the inequalities that arise because of discrimination, either explicit conscious discrimination or the unconscious institutional discrimination that place certain groups in a privileged position vis-a-vis -vis others. Canada has problems and has challenges it must face when it comes to economic inclusion, social inclusion, uh, political inclusion. And if those problems aren't dealt with in a fair and equitable manner, then this idea of equality through civic citizenship is going to be undermined as well. The second and third generation are going to want to be treated as equal Canadians because they are. And if they're not, well, then there might be a rising resentment or a sense of second-class citizenship within the country. And for liberal democracies that pride themselves on equality, equality of opportunity and hopefully outcome as well, this would undermine the very legitimacy and foundation of our countries.